What is up, Polygoners? How's everybody doing today? How are you doing, Kid Not? Hey, we're doing good today. Looking, good, looking forward to a couple good matches here. Absolutely. Yeah, we've got a few games coming for you. This is the Sunday Skirmish number three coming your way. Hopefully you uh, enjoyed the other event, the Carolina Gaming Summit, if you happen to be tuned into that on this stream. Thanks for checking that out. Hopefully you uh, had a good time watching those games, and hopefully you're having a good time if you are there in person. But now it is time for that Sunday Skirmish. I am super stoked. We have a TVZ coming your way. Penguin returning for his third week in a row. This is a King of the Hill style event. So if you win, you get to come back next week and potentially win, I believe, uh, $10, if I'm not mistaken, is the prize pool on that. So, yeah, definitely come check it out every Sunday. At this time, we will be doing the Sunday Skirmish. Uh, oh, I've got the title. Don't, don't join us on January 14th for the Sunday Skirmish. Join us next week for the Sunday Skirmish. Forgot to update that title a little bit. I'll get there in a minute. Anyway, Kid Not, are you ready for some StarCraft 2? I'm definitely ready for StarCraft 2, especially TVZ, my favorite matchup. Indeed, yeah, so we're going to pretty much hop right into this here. The game is ready to go. Uh, this was originally supposed to be a best of seven series. That is our typical format here at the Sunday Skirmish. Uh, this week, one of the players had to dip out a little early, so they decided to do a shorter set. Either way, we have a few awesome games coming your way. So let's go ahead and pretty much hop into that in just a second here. As long as everything, yep, everything looks good. I'm ready. Are you ready? I think you said you're ready. Hopefully yep, you viewers ready are ready. Go. I can uh, introduce our first player in the upper left-hand corner. We have playing for rival as our yellow Terran player. It is Future. All right. This is Future's first week here. Let's give him some hype in the chat. Give him some energy. Down in the bottom right. This guy's here, like I said earlier, for his third week in a row. So he has been dominating so far in the Sunday skirmish. Give it up for Penguin. He is our green Zerg player down here on Catalyst Ladder Edition. Uh, this map, sure you're all familiar with. It did stick around from the last map pool. Is here for this one. Uh, I'm a big fan of this map uh, myself. How do you think this map works for Zerg? Uh, you are a Zerg coach and a Zerg player yourself, kid not. So what, what, what would your typical strategy be on a map like this? Well, on this map, uh, I think it uh, is really good for Zerg because they can play a lot of macro games, but also for Terran, there's a lot of areas that they can drop. There's areas for Liberators. So mm -hmm. this is a really good map for both players. Um, third base is a little bit tough for Terran, um, but with Zerg, if they can get creep spread going, they can play a, a good macro game or they can have some aggression. So we'll have to see how it plays out. Uh -huh. And yeah, the Zerg typically takes that uh, third expansion over here to the kind of top right of his two bases, right? So it's kind of that little triangle shape, or is the easier one to get the uh, the third base over here on the left side? No, actually it's easier on the left side because oh, they yeah. can just get the creep connected with the three bases across where the one on the, the bottom right, that triangle, it's harder to get the creep spread going there. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, and that ramp can be used as chokes against you, especially in TVZ. Terran will try to utilize as many chokes as possible to keep those Zerglings at bay. Uh, but here we go, let's take a look at the Terran side of things as it looks like Penguin's just going two base and Zergling speed right now. Future's got his factory in production and Overlord is in his sights and he's gonna be gunning that down from the skies. And he also has his uh, command center about to finish up here, which Penguin will scout with this Overlord. Ooh, uh, Overlord actually will get away. Yeah, gets it's to got the high ground. Gets to the high ground there and we have uh, Penguin actually taking a quick third base. Yep on 29 supply that's very quick usually you wait till 33 34 but um looking for that quick expansion and probably going into a really high economic game and um yeah kind of as we anticipated it was going to play out uh-huh and future's going to scout that base as well so both players very active with their scouting right now reaper just kind of going back and forth trying to get some intel might go and try to get some drones here in a second uh, see how bold he chooses to be uh, meanwhile behind this there is a starport coming down to support the, the uh, reaper play here Ooh, zerglings almost in position to catch that reaper reaper will get past and onto the creep but a queen is here to give him some love oh is he gonna make it out oh, he Ooh. barely gets off yeah uh, zergling speed wasn't quite finished yet so it's oh, finished oh, now lucky. he's gonna probably gonna try and uh, catch up with the reaper and in case you didn't know on this map there is that little ledge right here for the Reaper that he has to jump down on. It's kind of hard to see at the uh, angle the map is at. 
Uh, but utilizing that ledge to the best of ex his extent is future. Here comes some Zerglings across the map. Penguin looking to get aggressive, I think. Uh, that is a big amount of Zerglings with even four more in production. Maybe more to follow up. Oh, is he doing... He's not doing drops, is he? No. No, he's got 22 Lings on the field and um, just making some drones behind it. But he may be looking to do a Ling run by here. Yeah, no Bailey nest. Yeah, when those Hyans move out. Ooh, hopefully they don't move out too soon. Looks like they are going to be here actually, for the defense. No, actually, he went right in. He should probably take all the Hellions out, pulling the SCVs. Yeah, the SCVs. Actually, yeah, the uh, Zerglings getting a really decent spread on the Hellions, able to pick off a few. Three will remain to be able to clean this up, but that's nine, ten workers being killed. Ooh, and a beautiful shot by Future, throwing up the wall just in time keep those Zerglings out of his face. That could have been even worse. Could have lost a few more Zerglings in the main there. So uh, nice hold there. Does lose 10 workers in the process. Uh, but here comes his counter pressure. A little Marine drop ready to go. And a Reaper joining it as well. Yeah, so it, yeah, it's actually yeah. just a little. Oh, and there's the Hellions. All right, this could work out. Mm -hmm. Need to uh, see what kind of defense now that Future could hold with. He's got some Hellbats actually. Uh, yeah. Future. Yeah, the Hellbats morphing in to really make this a little bit scarier of a push. One queen will die right away. 14 Zerglings are in production, but right now it's just queens and drones here to defend. And the drones are not going to be very helpful against those flames. Queens doing their best to hold the ramp. They are getting low on health. Drones making the evacuation out of the left side of the base. We'll save a good handful of those as Zerglings start to pop out left and right, getting surrounds on the Hellbats. Nice drop micro from Future, though, keeping a lot of these Hellbats alive. All four remain. Every single original uh, Hellion, as I say, that one's about to die, though. And the Gets Reaper's still off. alive. And the Reaper's still here doing work. Queen's trying to target down that medevac. The medevac is instrumental to this push. And it looks like the uh, the Hellions are just going to, or the, I'm sorry, the Hellbats are just going to come and have a barbecue right now. Are the Zerglings in time to clean this up? No, I think it's a little too much economic damage. He's still doing that micro with the uh, Hellbat, so he's going to roast some more drones. Actually, only eight drones going down this entire engagement. 72 Zerglings, though. That is a huge investment. Yeah, and good game is just going to get called. Penguin spending all of his money, all of his minerals on the, uh, on the Zerglings, pretty much, and just not able to hold. Yeah, the, uh, the initial push with the Zerglings didn't just seem to do as much as... Um, Penguin thought it would do, and I think the future pretty much had the plan to go a little bit of bio with those Hellbats, and it definitely worked out in that game. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, it was a really strong push. Nice follow-up after losing uh, so much economy there in the early game. Uh, so, beautiful stuff. Let's go yeah, ahead and out. get game number two ready. Uh, thanks again for hanging out, everybody. Oh, we do have some people here in the chat. Who's, uh, who's talking here? I can't read the name in there. I need to actually pull up the chat. <laughs> it, it's you. Urinok, I think, is one of them. Urinok? All right, yeah, let us know if we uh, if we spelled that wrong here. And I'm going to pull up the uh, chat as well so I can talk with you guys and we can we can have a good time watching StarCraft together, talking about the game that we all love. There we go. Oops, got to mute that, though. And I'm going to also do a pop-out. So, yeah, we will be hopping into game number two here in just a second. Thanks so much, everybody, for coming and hanging out today. Uh, let's go to a quick commercial break. We do have a little ad that we're going to play for you. Uh, just about a uh, StarCraft stats website. Uh, so it's something that could definitely help you out uh, in your StarCraft 2 career. So yeah, we'll be right back. Everybody stay tuned. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.